Okay, in this video, we are going to revisit this little air pressure sensor, which you can see on my breadboard. Now, I made a previous video where I interface this air pressure sensor up to a PIC microcontroller using the SCAMP3 board. But in this video, we're going to interface it up to the Arduino Nano as requested. So this is the actual air pressure sensor here. It's a six pin device. And inside this uh, sensor, there is a strain gauge which is configured as a Wheatstone bridge. Now the output of the Wheatstone bridge is fed into this chip here, this HX710B. Now inside this chip, there's an amplifier with a gain of 128. And that's fed into a 24-bit ADC. Now we can extract the air pressure data through the ADC from these four pins. First pin is uh, FEZC, 5 volts. Second pin is the ADC output, it's the serial uh, bit stream. The third pin is clock input, and the fourth pin is a common ground. And now these four pins are connected up to the Arduino Nano. And if you look at the schematic, you can see the Arduino Nano is powering the pressure sensor with 5 volts. The output, the ADC output from the pressure sensor is fed into pin 2 of the Nano. And the clock input comes, up, comes from pin 3 of the Nano into the clock input of the sensor and the two grounds are connected together. And I have an LED on pin 13 which is the same LED that's on board the Nano. So we could extract data from uh, these four pins. So every time I put one clock pulse into the clock input, I'm going to get one bit out of the data output. So if I put in 24 clock pulses into the clock input, I'm going to get a 24-bit output, the ADC output, and that will, be, that will be my pressure value. Okay, I have a rubber hose connected up to my air pressure sensor, and I have code running on the Arduino Nano, which set up to be an air pressure threshold detector. As opposed to when I had it hooked up to the SCAMP3 board and I put it into a glass of water, you can see the column of air inside the hose would be compressed and we would get a display on the 16 LEDs. But in this case, I'm just using it as a threshold detector, so at a certain pressure, it's going to turn on the LED on pin 13 on the Nano. So if I blow into the hose right now, if I blow into it, at a certain pressure, the LED is going to come on. And I have a glass of water, which about it's about half full, and that's my trigger. So when I put it into the glass of water, it's going to trigger the sensor at that pressure. So it's just a threshold detector. So when it, when it sees a, a glass half full of water, a certain pressure in the hose, it activates the LED. Okay, I have an empty glass, and I have the hose fed all the way to the bottom. So if I take some water, and I fill it up to about halfway, you watch the LED, which it hits halfway, LED comes on, indicating the glass is half full. Okay, so now you know how to interface this little air pressure sensor that has a range of 0 to 5.8 psi to a nano. Now you could use the language of your choice or even the microcontroller of your choice. All you need is two GPIO pins to extract the data through the ADC. Now I'm running interactive Arduino on the nano which is a very simple fourth that I have written based on eFourth. Now the next part of this video I'm going to show you how you could upload interactive Arduino into the nano using this connector here, the six pin ICSP connector. So all you have to do is get yourself a USB ASP programmer. You get them online, they're pretty inexpensive. And then you can upload interactive Arduino into the Nano. Okay, here's the USB ASP programmer, which we could use to upload a hex file into the Nano. And it comes with a 10-pin JTAG connector with a 10-pin ribbon cable. But we only need six wires to program the Nano. So it comes with a little adapter. So it's a 10-pin to 6-pin, and with the ground on the top, it plugs in this direction, like that. So now we could run some software called AVR Dude, and we could program a hex file into the Arduino Nano. Now AVR Dude is a command line program, but there's a GUI version called AVR Dude S, so we could use that to upload a hex file into the Arduino Nano. Okay, I have AVR Dude S up and running on my computer. So the first thing we have to do, we have to select a USB ASP programmer. So if we go to the very top where it says Programmer, and we do the pull-down menu, now these are all the programmers that AVR Dude S supports. And if we go almost to the bottom, we could select USB ASP. Now the port, we select USB, and we go over to MCU, and we hit Detect, 
you see at the bottom output screen it has detected that Mega 320p microcontroller so now we know it's communicating with the microcontroller so now we go to the fuses and lock bits so we read the fuses and we read the lock bits so low fuse should be hex FF the high fuse should be hex D8 extended fuse should be hex FD and the lock bits should be hex FF now if you don't get those values you can write them in the text box and then hit the right button for the lock bits and the right button for the fuses. So now next we have to upload the hex file. So we go up to flash and we hit our browse button and we find our hex file in, on our computer. And you can see there I have ia.hex. That's my interactive Arduino. So we go to write, we select write and we go down to program. So now it's starting to write the hex file into the microcontroller and after it's finished writing it's going to read the microcontroller and do a verify. So right now it's writing. Now it's reading. Now it's verifying the flash. And there it's done. So it's verified and it's done. So now interactive Arduino is running on my microcontroller. Okay, here's the code running on the Nano. And it's written in fourth using interactive Arduino. So the first thing we do, we initialize the GPIO. Now pin 13 it's configured as an output because that's connected up to the LED. Then pin 3, that's the clock input to the ADC. And pin 2 is the D out of the ADC. So we initialize all those pins right here. So when we run init GPIO, it's going to initialize those, those GPIO pins. D out, that monitors pin 2. When D out is low, that means it's not busy. And we could actually read an ADC value. Pulse generates one pulse. And that pulse is fed into the ADC. Now when we feed 24 pulses into the ADC, that's what these two words do, we'll get 24 bits back and that'll be our 24-bit word, our ADC value, our pressure value. So I have a word test. It's continuously reading the ADC. So we could uh, hook up a, a rubber hose and blow into it and we'll get values from about 7,000 to 65,535. That's zero pounds to 5.8 PSI. So that's our test. That's where we could actually get values and then here's air question mark. This is where I put the hose into the half a cup of water. And half a cup of water was about 10,000. So that's my threshold, which I got from the word test. I put that into the half a glass of water and it's, it was 10,000. So anything after 10,000 will turn on the LED. And below 10,000 will turn off the LED. So we take this code, right click, we select all, and we copy it. Now we can copy and paste it into TerraTerm. And I'll take this code and program it into the, into the microcontroller. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. And I have a USB cable from my computer to the USB connector on my Nano. And if I hit the reset button on the Nano, you see I get interactive Arduino hello screen. And if I hit my enter key, I get an OK prompt. And if we go to setup, serial port, you can see I'm on COM9. My baud rate is 19.2k baud. Data is 8 bits. Parity is none. One stop bit. Flow control is none. I got my delay, my, my millisecond per line delay to 120 milliseconds because the compiler is running on the microcontroller itself. So we have to give it time to compile. So that's my setting. So now if I paste my code, so I right click, hit OK. And now she's starting to uh, compile. And you can see it on each end of each line, I get an OK. That means it's, uh, it's compiling OK. Now at the very end, I get my OK prompt. So now I can run the word test. There's my value, my ADC values with, uh, I'm not blowing into the rubber hose, so I get in about 7,300. So now I'm gonna blow into the hose. And you see it maxed out at 65,535. So that's how we get our, our test values. If we hit any key to stop, now we could use that in the code for our threshold triggering. Okay, so now you know how to upload a hex file into a microcontroller and to get the fourth operating system up and running and to write some code and compile it using TerraTerm and run it on the Arduino Nano. So once you get used to this setup, you could probably think of some other projects using interactive Arduino.